Hi, I'm Ryan Casey, sales trainer, Orange Theory Fitness Studio owner, and I'm excited to have you join me here today. You might be a business owner, manage a business, or even in sales yourself, but regardless of what position you hold, I want to let you know I'm going to help you out here today. Today, we're here to talk about the three killers for your franchise or your small business's sales and how to overcome those. There are many small businesses that have a staff that doesn't feel comfortable with sales and isn't even intimidated just by learning it. We're going to get in some training to help you out no matter where you're at. Right now, business owners, we need every edge we can get. We can't afford to be losing sales and not operating at our best. You know, as a business owner, think about all of the things you do. You work so hard to make everything run smoothly in your business, paying all the bills, rent, payroll, supplies, advertising, all the planning that goes into running a business. You put effort into all of these areas, but if your team isn't selling, none of that matters. So how many sales do you think your staff might lose on a weekly basis? Have you ever heard them forget to say something they were supposed to, uh, not attempt to handle an objection, or sometimes even skip asking the customer to buy? Well, what if you could increase your sales by just five to 10 sales per month per location? That's only a couple a week, right? What's the lifetime value of your clients? If your average profit per client is $100 a month, they stay around for an average of three to six months, you're looking at $300 to $600 of lifetime value. Some of your businesses have lifetime values of up towards $1,000 per client. Well, if your lifetime value is just $300 to $600 and you have two to three locations, that additional five to 10 sales comes out to be $3,000 to $18,000 more revenue each month. Now, even if you only have one location for your business, that's $1,500 to $6,000 of additional revenue per month for those five to 10 sales, right? Now, what if I could help you double the amount of sales you're making with your current staff? And I'll show you an example of that exact scenario later today. Jay Abraham is a world-renowned business and marketing consultant. And he says, when you get everybody in your organization who interacts with the client to be basically an extension of your company and a consultative salesperson, it can increase sales from 20% up to 5,000%. And consultative sales is about asking questions and having a customer centric approach. Now, increasing your closing percentage adds revenue straight to your bottom line. But not only that, a well-trained staff will decrease the cost of staff turnover it will save on the cost of finding new candidates. It's less time spent training new staff members. Your people feel better, they're gonna be performing better, right? Better staff retention equals more member retention, which raises that lifetime value for your client and again, increases your profit. And this also makes your manager jo manager's job much easier and makes them happier, which is a key in leveraging your business and not being a slave to your business and working in there 24 hours a day. Now, if you're on staff, I know where you're coming from. I've been there, right? If you're, if you're like most people working in a small business, you love the industry you're in, whether it's fitness or beauty or health, but you don't love sales, right? You put up with it because it keeps you working in that industry they love. And I'm sure if you're on staff, you, some of you can relate to that. Now, owners, I want you to think though, how would it feel to have your staff be really good at sales. And I'm not talking about the stereotypes of typical sales, like a used car salesperson or Wolf of Wall Street, but I'm talking about real sales, connecting with people, helping clients find a solution to their needs and goals, and really making a difference in people's lives through your product or your service. And that's what the real stands for in the real business solutions, my company. It's about results from empathy, asking questions and learning. Now, let's talk about some of the challenges you face as a business owner. And I've worked with dozens of small business owners and their management teams, and I consistently hear these challenges. As an owner or a manager, you can feel like you're consistently losing out on sales. And it seems like sometimes your salespeople aren't even trying at times. You get to the point where you don't even wanna listen because you don't want to hear all the things that are driving you crazy. You know they're missing in their approach. They're not asking for the sale. Maybe they're asking with a negative expectation, like you didn't want to get it, did you? Uh, not attempting to handle any objections. 
right? Have you ever stood behind the office door and kind of cringed at what you were hearing there? And your staff people, your salespeople, they can be miserable sometimes. They'll do everything they can to avoid selling. They'll do busy work, look at their phones, uh, find easy tasks to complete that don't generate any revenue for you. Your bathrooms might be spotless, but they're not selling anything. You know, many of your staffs might be scared and intimidated by even the word sales. And uh, there, it's only a matter of time before those people are going to put in their notice and the cycle will start again. But this time it'll require more training, more onboarding, more money spent on finding candidates, more time wasted that you could have been spending on sales. Uh, you might be searching for a better sales process. Uh, you've tried coaching, motivating, training your staff, everything your franchisor has told you to do, but it doesn't seem to help. And if you can relate with any of those, I want to let you know that you're in the right place. So first, let me give you a little background on my story. Uh, I started in sales in 1997 as a senior in high school, and I was not what you would say a born salesperson. I was super shy. In fact, I remember coming home after getting my job and I came home and I told my parents, hey, I'm going to be selling in people's houses some kitchen stuff. And still to this day, I have never seen my dad laugh so hard on the ground rolling, laughing, because he didn't think there was any way this shy kid was going to be able to sell something in people's houses, let alone kitchen stuff, which I knew nothing about. And I'm glad he did that, though, because that really gave me some fuel and it, to make sure I succeeded. And I needed that fuel because I was bad. I was really bad. Um, but I was able to learn. And what happened is it gave me the confidence that anyone can learn to not only be good at sales, but also learn to enjoy it. And I went on to become a manager with the company for 20 years. And during that time, I trained thousands of sales representatives, a few hundred managers. Uh, many of you are familiar with Cutco. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar with Cutco, basically we would take young adults with little to no job experience. We would teach them how to set in-home appointments. They would uh, go on a sales call to do the sales presentation. They would be closing around 60 to 70% of their sales with about a $400 average order for knives, by the way, uh, kitchen knives. And over 90% of customers they would go see were not planning on buying at the beginning of the appointment. And they ended up with a 60 to 70%, some even higher closing ratio. And then they were only allowed to work off referrals. So we had to teach them how to generate their own referrals. They weren't allowed to cold call or go door to door. And my slow start and helped my conviction as a trainer that I could teach anyone sales. And in 2016, we opened up our first Orange Theory Fitness Studio. And compared to teaching uh, people how to do direct sales, uh, in-store retail, it was a piece of cake. Uh, however, seeing resumes in the fitness industry was a shocking sight for me. I, I didn't come from a fitness background. And I was amazed at the consistent turnover. So I focused on really training our people to enjoy the sales process, not just the fitness element. And we opened up with over 700 members. Two years later, we opened our second studio and duplicated the 700 pre-sales. Both studios were operating at 1,200 reoccurring members before COVID. And uh, we just have bounced back these last few months. Washington State has been open and our, we're busting at the seams. We have full capacity and we're ready to move on to that 100% and, and keep going there. So I, I realized though that many small businesses and franchise were not uh, giving or didn't have access to sales training that really made their people feel successful and comfortable. Now there's a million sales courses out there, uh, but they're generally more intimidating. They're not as effective for many of our staff members who really don't care so much about the sales as, they, as much as they just love the industry and the people. So I happened to get a phone call with Eric Van Horn, who if you're in franchising, you, you might know the name. And he started asking me about how are we able to get and maintain so many members in our studio? He asked about our staff retention. And I basically told him, well, I, I teach my people how to sell. And we dug in a little bit about my process, which I'll be sharing with you. And after hearing that, he said, well, we, we need to do a sales challenges for franchisees. I have a lot of franchisees who need to hear this. And so this is what Eric had to say about after running that quick sales challenge for his people. After talking to Ryan the first time on the phone, hearing the results his studios were getting in his background, I knew other franchisees could greatly benefit from his sales training. After running a double your sales challenge with him this summer, the feedback we heard was fantastic. I highly recommend any franchisee or business owner to get your staff trained by Ryan. Henry Kim 
was one of those people in that challenge. He had employees from all six of his Massage Envy studios, two Lash studios. And on the challenge, here's what he had to say. Our eight locations went through Ryan Casey sales training and it was tremendous. Our locations were struggling with membership sales prior to Ryan's training. And after his training, all locations increased their sales closing. Now we are regularly tops in our region in membership sales. Thank you, Ryan Casey. Uh, Brett Stahl took the course in the fall. His Yoga 6 doubled his sales the very next month after taking the sales course. But let me show you what's really possible. How would you feel about doubling your sales in your business right now? If you're struggling with sales, you're tired of throwing more and more money at advertising simply to see a higher and higher percentage of those leads not end up turning into clients, this is your answer. Todd and Melissa own three Massage Envy studios in Texas. Their towns had been hit hard with COVID, also with some layoffs, many of the energy companies there and sales had been declining. Now, after our sales challenge and getting their staff a little extra training, here are the results just one month later. All three locations doubled their closing percentage and some even more than that. And you might say, well, you know, if they had been hit hard, it's probably not as difficult to double your closing percentage if they're starting at a low point. Well, in the fall, I was on a Zoom call with Todd and Melissa. And this is what they had to say about their year over year. They had doubled the sales year over year before COVID. They sold more during COVID than they did after, right? And I heard from them again in January. And by the way, I love hearing from a follow-up from my past clients. I'm always reaching out and hearing from um, previous course takers. And now they have two out of the top five massage MV studios in Texas for their January sales promotion. In March 21, their update was they were the number one massage envy in the nation for year over year growth in sales. So let's get to some of the most common mistakes that are holding people back with their sales teams. And for most small businesses, these mistakes fall into one of three categories. The first one is the mindset based mistakes. And this is where your staff might have a, a negative view of sales. They're intimidated by, or they have a strong dislike for sales. Uh, many of them seem indifferent to the outcome if a client actually purchases. Uh, many have tried to avoid every opportunity they can to sell. And for, for others, they come across as perfect. They're friendly, they connect with customers. Everybody loves them, but then they just can't close any sales because they're afraid to ask clients to buy or handle any objections. And I don't know, you might have some of those people on your staff. Everybody usually does. After mindset-based mistakes are skill-based mistakes. This is where your staff, they give a great effort. They want to sell, but they just make too many tactical errors. They aren't skilled in building a good rapport with customers. They aren't strategic with the questions they ask. They're unable to effectively handle objections consistently. And this is very common. Most franchisees, they don't have a lot of sales training built into their onboarding process. And a lot of business owners, we, we tell our staff what to do, but we don't always give a lot of extra training on how to do it better, especially in sales. And if you're a staff member watching this, I'm sure you can relate. And lastly, we have process-based mistakes. Your staff might want to sell. They give a good effort. They aren't incredibly afraid of sales. They just don't have the right approach. I see this a lot with franchises. There's a process for the franchise, which is something like they book an appointment, they meet the prospect, give them an onboarding form, uh, they set up their first service or their class, and then they try to sell a membership afterwards. But that, that's not a real sales process. That's more of an operational process. And that's not gonna help your people sell anymore. There's not a process of what questions to ask, how to build value, how to build proper rapport, how to personalize their sales approach, handling objections before they come up or even after. And if your people are inconsistent with how they approach customers, ask questions, handle concerns, they need help following the right process. So how do we fix all of these? Well, let's dig a little bit deeper into process-based mistakes. So this is an overview of what I teach in my complete real sales training course. And for owners and managers, this is a perfect thing to teach at a staff meeting. I will usually teach this overview to all our new sales associates and I'll do a refresher at a staff meeting at least once a quarter. In between, I have our managers dig in on some more of the individual topics and they also use the recordings and the facilitation guides from my course in our studios. But before we start with the process, you have to have a foundation that you will build everything on. And that is, what's your main objective? When you meet a new prospect, 
What is your main objective? Do you have a main objective that you promote with your staff? Is your goal just to make a sale? I know in fitness, we see this with a lot of typical big box gyms. They have people that their job is just to sell memberships and your job is to sell. Uh, but that leads to more pressure and intimidation for the staff. You know, did you make a sale? Did you sell? How many did you sell today? It also doesn't lead to many long-term clients or set up the culture you might want. Now, if I asked you if you had an objective and you say, oh, we don't really have an objective that we tell our people, you're probably coaching as if a sale is the most important thing because that's generally the metric that your staff gets measured by. Now, another objective that I hear a lot from franchisees is our main objective is to understand our customers why. And that's great, you know, that is important, but it's a terrible main objective. And here's why. To, to come up with a good objective, think about meeting your prospect as a timeline from when you meet them until you accomplish that objective. Now, what you wanna do is ask yourself, where does a sale fall within that timeline? And if your objective is to learn their why, well, you don't make a sale until afterwards. So what happens is now your people feel bad because they're finding out their why, they're accomplishing their sale, they feel good because they accomplished the objective, but then they're being told they have to sell more, right? And so, you know, think about what you really want for an objective. Do you want your clients to be just a quick drop in or do you want a long-term member? What do you want them to accomplish from your business? What goals do you want them to hit? How involved do you want them in their business? Are they your biggest fans? Are they promoting? Are they bringing in other people? What do you want them to say about your business? So as an example, our objective is to create a long-term member that becomes part of our community. And so what's your objective in your business? And more importantly, how are you communicating that to your staff? So now that we have that objective, what we're gonna do is we're gonna tie every part of our sales process to that. So let's get into the sales process. We use a five-step process. Each step builds on the previous one. So if you do each step effectively, it will make the next step much easier. So the goal of this process is also to reframe how most people think about sales. And this is what makes this process so effective for your staff because many of your staff members, they start tuning out as soon as they hear sales and a sales training. So what this process does is basically breaks down what good selling really is into five bite-sized pieces that are easy to absorb, that are not intimidating, and they're easy to implement for each one of your staff members. So let's get to the first one, which is building rapport. So how many awkward staff members have you had in your business? I was one of those people, right? When I started in sales, I was extremely shy. Some people can be thrown into a room and just naturally connect with others. I was not one of those people. So learning how to build rapport is something that anybody can do. And even your people who might be very charismatic, they're not always good at building rapport. Just because someone can talk, that doesn't always mean they can connect. So many of your businesses, especially if it's in the health or fitness or beauty industry, they have clients that deal with some intimate problems and needs. Uh, if you really want a client to open up and tell you what they need help with, there has to be a connection. If there's no connection, it's gonna be much harder to really get to what this client truly wants and how you can help them. So our second step, is ask the right questions. So once we have connected with a customer, then it's about letting them talk. You know, too often salespeople get into their pitch before really even hearing uh, anything about what the customer's needs are. And that's also why rapport is so important. If there's no rapport, the answers to questions are gonna be very generic. So if you ask somebody without rapport, without a good rapport built, hey, what are your fitness goals? You'll get answers like to lose a few pounds or get in better shape. It's a very generic response. But if you have great rapport and you ask somebody about their fitness goals, they might say something like, you know what, I need to keep up with my kids. I'm too out of shape and I get tired when I'm trying to play with them. That's a big difference in the problem that you're trying to solve for that customer. Now, it's not just about asking the canned questions on an onboarding or client intake form, though. It's about finding their why. It's not about just what you ask, but how you ask them. Your goal is to help them, not interrogate them. You don't want them to feel like they have a spotlight on them in an interrogation, but it's about being strategic with which questions you ask them, each one with a purpose. Now, the third step is educating your client. And there's a big difference between educate, educating and selling to your customers. If you are saying a specific canned approach every single time, you're not educating. You're pushing what you want to sell on your clients. 
And this part should be a little different every single time because you're going to emphasize what the customer told you, what was important to them when you were asking them questions. If you build rapport with your question, your customer, if you ask them the right questions, then you explain exactly how your product or service aligns with what they told you that they wanted, what they don't like, or what hasn't worked for them in the past and what their goals are. Then every client should be saying that your business was created just for them. Like this, this product, this service must have been created just for me because that's everything I want and all the things that, that I don't want are out. So that is what happens when you, uh, you execute this step properly. Now, the fourth step is listen and problem solve. So at this point, everyone should want what you have, but there might be something holding them back. You know, and they give you an objection. Uh, in sales, handling objections is a very common phrase. It's taught and role played often. I don't teach handling objections. And here's why. What client wants to be handled, right? Do you think your intimidated staff members really want to handle your customers' objections? Handling objections can be one of the most intimidating things in sales, even to some of the most experienced salespeople. How do you think your staff member who doesn't even like sales and has very little training, how do you think they're going to feel, right? So the analogy I like to use is telling your staff to handle objections is like throwing them in the boxing ring with Mike Tyson and just telling him to handle it. Hey, if he just punches, just duck and hit him back, right? You can do it, just handle it, right? That's super intimidating. They're probably just gonna get up, give up without a fight. And you've probably seen this happen in your business where a customer gives your, per, your, your staff member an objection and they just say, okay, instead of trying to attempt to handle that. So instead of handling objections, we teach, listen, understand, problem solve. Customers want to be listened to. Customers want to be understood. And if you do those things, they're going to be much more willing to hear your solution. So if you were a staff member, which one would you feel more comfortable with? Handle objections. When a customer says this, you say that. When they say that, you say this. Just handle it. Or, hey, if a customer doesn't buy, just make sure you listen, you understand what's holding them back, and then offer a solution. Do you feel comfortable listening, understanding, and offering solutions? The answer is usually, yeah, I feel, I feel fine with that. I can do that, right? So even just the way you say it sounds so much less intimidating. Lastly, fifth step is reassure and bridge. Remember going back to our foundation. Our goal is not just to make a sale. It's to have a long-term client or build a community or, or people hitting consistently hitting their goals or whatever your objective is, whatever you decide. But once they buy, we're not done. So first we reassure. We want people to feel great about their purchase. We don't ever want buyer's remorse. You know, you can think of it a restaurant analogy. If you go buy Subway or a sandwich shop and you order your food, they say that's eight bucks. But if you go to a really nice restaurant and you place an order, they almost always say, ooh, that was an excellent choice. They make you feel good about your decision. And then we talk about reassure and bridge. And bridging is doing some small things to take them from just a sale to getting to your objective. Maybe it's booking them for their next class or downloading an app or putting them into your Facebook community. But there's lots of steps that you know if this customer does this, it's gonna keep them around for long-term. So we focus on making them feel good and helping, helping them take those small steps to bridge them to our long-term objective. And as you can see, our process is made up of different skills, which I teach in detail, not just the skill, but we really focus on the mindset around it. I remember one of our top staff members, one of our very original staff members telling me, you know, I love Orange Theory. I love helping people hit their goals. I just hate selling. I hate it. I don't like selling. So I asked her, and this is she brand new at this time, I said, do you like connecting with people? She's like, oh yeah, I love talking to people. I'm like, well, do you like getting to know our members and hear about their experiences? She's like, yeah. It's like, do you like to educate about people about OTF? She's like, I tell everybody about it. It's like, well, do you think you can help members solve problems and can you listen to them? She's like, I, I can do that. I'm like, can you celebrate with people? And once they become members, she's like, that's my favorite part. And I looked at her and I said, guess what? I mean, you could sell. And you could see her kind of do the math and, and it just her face change. And she had that, that face where, uh, and she looked at me like you miyagi me, right? From that, whatever that movie with Steve Carell was. And you know what? She was great at it. And it was really just about switching her mindset about what she was doing. So that's our process. Now you might have some questions like, you know what? I'm not a salesperson. How am I going to teach this to my entire staff? Um, you know, my manager has enough on my plate. Do I really want to pile this on their plate? 
Um, how long does it take to uh, train my entire staff? Do they have to be at certain sessions or is there time frames? You know, what about my new hires later? Basically, you have two options. If you want to implement these strategies, you can one, teach them yourself or have your manager train them. Or two, you can use my training program. Now, before I explain the price, I want to go over what I cover in detail on my complete real sales training course. So first, we talk about the right mindset for sales, really eliminating fear and intimidation so you can have a happier, more confident staff. And we do a lot of training on having a good objective. Then we get into four ways on building rapport with your clients. So you have a staff that can connect with any prospect and they feel confident in their ability to approach others and build a relationship of trust. We talk about how to craft three different types of questions that will make your sales easy. So you can see your staff become more skilled in asking the right questions, getting the sales quicker and eliminating the majority of objections they receive. We have a module on the difference between educating and pushy selling. So you can make your staff and your clients more comfortable in how your products and services are explained. So your clients really see the maximum value. And during this section, we cover educating clients. We talk about building value and we have a whole section on how to ask for the sale in a comfortable way. So your people feel comfortable doing it. Uh, we talk about how to get rid of objection handling. No more handling objections, but instead really listening and problem solving with your clients to make more sales. We get into turning your sales into long-term clients and increase your business referrals. We get a lot into referral training, member retention keys, using the sales process on the phone even in this, this module. Now, working with me privately for just those sessions would be over $5,000. Now, I do have a few bonuses I throw in. Now, along with the training manuals, here's what I include. Uh, first is the core values index training. And this is the most accurate personality assessment that helps staff members really work with each client in the way the client wants to be worked with. It's also great for your managers working with staff members. I like it because it's very simple and easy to understand. I've used it for 12 years. I use this scattered throughout all the lessons and have one big bonus session just on CVI. Another bonus is over eight hours of recorded question and answer calls where I answer questions listed from dozens of owners, managers, and even staff members. These are organized by the question in the course. So instead of watching hours of content to try to find the question you need, just find the questions and watch the corresponding video. We also have a Facebook group. And this is where staff members can post questions. You can tag me. I'm pretty responsive in there. Uh, there's lots of activities for each lesson. You can ask follow-ups during the course. We also have a bonus of worksheets for your staff members so they can follow on during the course and a brand new facilitation guide for an owner or manager to guide your staff through the training. So you can assign videos to watch for your staff or watch them as a team, then discuss and make action plans to implement. This facilitation guide includes over a hundred discussion questions to make it easier for you or your manager to implement what they learned in the course and see immediate results. And of course, you have forever access to the course. You don't have, ever have to worry about your members missing a live training. They can take it at their own pace. There's no time frame for it. Your managers can use this for onboarding new staff members or for ongoing training with your current team. Each staff member also gets their own login and they should have progress bar on each lesson so you can see their progress and use for future off onboarding. So, how much is this going to cost me? You know, sales training can run at the thousands per person getting trained. So if you had five people, even if it was only $2,000, that's $10,000. But what if you were like Henry Kim, who had 50 staff members on during our first training, right? Well, if you want to work with me privately for all these sessions and the question and answer time, that would start at $10,000. But you can get your staff of not just up to five, but up for 15 members, right? And not for 10000 Actually, not even for the, just what the course alone value is of $5,000, but the price for the real sales training course is only $2,500 for up to 15 of your staff members or three payments of 1000 Not only that, but any additional staff members are only 50. So if you have a lot of locations, you want to get everybody in there, they're only $50 per individual login. <clears throat> but I'm offering a special today. 
And before that countdown timer hits zero, I'm going to give an additional 60% off. So the real complete real sales training course is only $1,000 access forever. You pay once you get it for the rest of the time as a business owner, you can always use it. I'm doing this because I want to make it affordable for any small business. In fact, you can even pay over two months at 600 bucks a month there. And if I want you to think about how many additional sales would it take to pay for that investment? For many of you, that's one or two sales, right? Many of you, maybe three sales to take for this. Every month after that, you're making thousands of dollars more from what that one-time cost of the course was. Remember that example we used at the beginning, even with one location, an additional five to 10 sales per month can be 20,000 up to over $70,000 of additional revenue for each location for your business. Now, this training is not an expense. This is an investment in your team. And what if your staff was like Todd and Melissa example and you doubled your closing percentage or like Brett and his yoga six team that doubled the sales just one month after taking the course. Uh, I've recently heard from another client who's gone back to back months as the number one location in the nation for their national franchise brand. Now the catch is I'm only offering this price for a limited time, so you need to act now. And if you're still unsure, I'm gonna make this really easy for you. I'm gonna give you a 15 day full money back guarantee. If you get 15 days in and your people aren't learning, you don't feel it's making the impact they expected, I'll give you a 100% refund. You have nothing to lose. So let me explain again what you get. You get the five training modules, one for each step of the real sales process. You get the bonus day of CVI training. You have over eight hours of recording question and answer organized by the question for easy access. You have handouts for your staff members, access for up to 15 people. Here's another little bonus. If you lose a staff member, just email me and we'll swap their login for a new staff member to help you with onboarding. So you can always have 15 rotating spots and you can always add more for only $50 for the additional one. We have a facilitation guide of hundreds of questions to help your staff really get the most out of the course and help your manager guide them through it. It's only $50 per additional person, as I mentioned. There's a Facebook group for interaction, forever access. So you can continue to make this part of your onboarding process. Use this to continually train your team throughout the year. And of course, some free access to any future upgrades or additions that I throw into the course. And so I am offering this for 60% off today. Get it right now while it's on sale and before it goes back up to the, the regular price of $2,500. Now, a few frequently asked questions. Do I get immediate access to everything? Do I have to follow the, the course? You can, you get immediate access to everything. You can hunt and peck if you want. I recommend kind of going through, but you get immediate access to all of it immediately once you sign up. The trainings, how long are they? They generally run about 50, usually most of them are 55 to 60 minutes. How do I get my staff access? Once you sign up, you'll get an email. You just need to respond to that email with the names and emails of your staff members. And within 48 hours, all of them will have access to the course and you can go for it. Another question, is there any ongoing costs? No, there's no ongoing costs. This is a one time, currently $1,000 is it. And you have access for your whole staff forever. And then of course, uh, free access to future upgrades. So click the bink link below. Let's get your team trained. I'd love to help them. Have a great day. Hope to see you soon.